Hey guys, it's me, Taryn, from Hapu Helpers. Um, for those that don't know me, um, my partner and myself both got pregnant, 12 days apart, using at-home insemination, using the same donor. Um, I have done heaps of research over the years um, to understand the, you know, trying to conceive, um, I did a lot of research, um, finding the best method that would work, that obviously worked, because me and my partner were pregnant, tw uh, 12 days apart, after being told that we didn't have most, the most optimal fertility. So, I have been sharing our journey, I've been sharing my information, um, to everyone, um, and helping women conceive, and I have been successful, and it has been awesome, um, helping people fulfill their dreams of becoming parents. Um, so today I also provide tools and kits and all that sort of stuff, which is on our website, um, that will help you with conceiving. But today we're going to cover ovulation. Um, ovulation is everything to do with pregnancy. Um, before I even got into this whole thing, I had no idea that women only had a really short frame to get pregnant. There's only like a week, okay, and you kind of bring it down to a couple of days in which a woman can fall pregnant. I had no idea. I thought you could just get pregnant whenever, but no. You've got to get pregnant within a certain amount of time when the egg is healthy, otherwise the egg will die and eventually pass out through your period. So, your how your menstrual cycle works is the day you start your period is day one of your cycle. Most women ovulate round about day 14 of their cycle. Can be very different if you've got polycystic ovaries, can be very different, otherwise women are just dif different altogether. No woman is the same. So the first thing what, what you guys want to do when you are trying to monitor your ovulation, I do recommend people start doing this a few months before they are actually wanting to conceive so that they know what days they are uh, are fertile, um, so that they can do their inseminations at the right time. Um, but the first thing you want to do is you want to track your period with the period tracker. Now, most women that I speak to will say that they're using Flow. Okay, and I'm not saying Flow is a bad, a bad app at all. Um, I'll ask them why they're using Flow and they'll say that's the one that's recommended. That's the one that all women recommend or most women recommend. Now, what I'm going to say now is that Flow may be a good app for the person recommending it, but that would mean that Flow is a good app for them, okay? Just because an app's telling you you're meant to be ovulating on this day doesn't mean you are. The only way you're going to be able to confirm that is through doing ovulation tests, which is something that I'm going to go through just now. The best thing and what that I can advise you of is that you download more than one app maybe about three apps. The one I used is called the Period Tracker Period Calendar, a random name, but it worked really well, has worked really well for me and has worked really well for a lot of the women that I have helped. Not saying it will necessarily work well for you, but download that app anyway and have it as one of your apps, that flow and maybe something else. Um, and with that, we're going to see which app works for you, which app is the right app for you and your body, okay? The period calendar one that I used has got like a red, reddish pink book with like a flower on it. Um, there is a picture on the website. If you go under all things ovulation, you'll see the, um, you'll see it there. So I do recommend downloading that app. And just if people are saying these things about these apps, all good and well, but you need to just, they, you need to know and they need to also know is that just because it's a good app for them it doesn't mean it's a good app for everyone because a lot of people are specifically for example relying on flow and going with flow but they're completely missing the ovulation there are so many women that I have helped see that they're completely missing the ovulation and a lot of those women have become pregnant since finding the app that works for them feel free to message me if you if you want my help with finding the right app for you I'm here. I'm here to help you guys. That's what I do. Okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to put in all your details into the app. 
and it's going to kind of give you a forecast of what your month's going to look will look like what I suggest for the first one is you start testing your um your ovulation and you start doing it round about where it says you start to get fertile and what I recommend is I recommend using these cheaper strips you can get different brands and all of that sort of stuff this is what this is the brand we use this is the brand that I sell um, in my ovulation kits and in my insemination kits and everything it's this brand these are just cheap sticks and what you do is what I did literally I just cut the bottom of a water bottle like a pump bottle um, I cut cut that off and I literally use that as my pee cup and I would test my ovulation I'll test it twice so I'll test it on my first morning urine so my first wee of the morning I'd like wee for like a little bit and then I'll stick the cup there gather some wee and then do the test um, and I would do it again I would then hold my urine for a good three four hours and then at that next one I would test my ovulation again and that seems to work really well so these tests I'll just show you they are like little sticks so all your fancier tests literally have got a stick like this in um, it will just be a little bit bigger but that's essentially what it is and what you do is you follow the instructions on here but you just dip it in and it will then show you a, a test line and a control line so you're always going to pretty much have a, um, a test line of sorts, but the darker your test line is, the closer to ovulation you are getting. Now, what I always recommend is I always recommend that you guys get one of these. Now, Clear Blue has got two types. It's got the four most and the two most. The two most um, is, you can see it's got the pink tests the other one has got like purple tests these are a lot more accurate the one that's like foremost whatever has been known to give false positives now it may not give you false positives but well either false positives or false negatives so people have actually missed their ovulation but these ones are either just a, a flat yes or no not this maybe perhaps it could be kind of result so I do recommend getting these. I do sell these on the website too. Literally, guys, a lot of my products, I literally don't make money off. I go to Chemist Warehouse and I buy these and I put them on at what I pay for them just to make it easier for you because I want to be that, that service that provides you with everything. So I recommend getting these because when this gets darker, you want to confirm. I, well, I did, right? You, if you don't want to, that's fine. You can kind of like go with the stick. But I wanted to confirm whether it was a definite yes or a definite no that I had reached my LH peak. Okay. So why I recommend using the two is that these are cheaper, right? If you're going to be using these, I think these are, I can't remember, I think they're 30 bucks. That's going to be per month for you to like use these. But these are a hell of a lot cheaper and a box like this when you're using them both together could last you three to four months of testing so at the end of the day i'm just trying to save you money um so yeah and now what happens is when you've got your when you've reached your lh peak what happens then is your egg drops okay um your egg will drop between 12 and 36 hours after you've reached your peak so don't get your peak and be like oh my god if i do not inseminate within the next few hours i'm going to lose it because that's not going to happen so you'll release your egg within 12 to 36 hours after you've got your peak and your egg will then come down and your egg will kind of chill out for about between 8 and 12 hours is when the egg quality will start to decrease. By 24 hours after the egg has been released, the egg dies. Okay? And is dead. Okay? So, um, 
very sad actually that we're born with a certain amount of eggs and they just die every month, every period. So yeah, that is why ovulation is so important. And what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to record when you've reached your LH peak. So when you reach your LH peak, you put it into that same app. You're like, right, today I got my LH peak. Cool. And your app will start to figure out your body and work with the timing that you're putting everything in. And that's a fantastic thing. The other thing with ovulation and what you can do, um, and this, I did temp, and PCOS women should be testing like this um, because their ovulation is very unpredictable. But yeah, it's temping. And temping is done basically when you take your temperature in the morning and record it also into your app. Now, what temping does is temping will confirm you've ovulated. So it will confirm that an, an egg has literally dropped out of your ovaries. Because sometimes we'll ovulate, but an egg, a physical egg will not drop. This does happen. Um, whether you want to know that or not, it's sort of up to you. PCOS women would need to know this because they are then able to monitor their ovulation through that. So what happens is you wake up in the morning before you do anything, before you check your phone, drink water, talk, whatever it is, you take your temperature. Now the thing is, is the thermometer that you use needs to be a BBT thermometer with two decimal places. So for example, your temperature must, instead of being 36.7, it must be 36.74. You need to have that other decimal because that slight change can indicate your ovulation. And if you go and you have a look on my website, you'll see an example of what a BBT chart would look like, and you'll physically see that your temperature will be all great, all hunky-dory. It drops and it peaks, and it stays high. That drop and peak means the egg has been released. Okay, so that's what you're doing when you're looking at this. The other thing that you can check is you can check the position of your cervix. Now, I personally, I've got small little stubby fingers, so I can't feel my cervix. A lot of women can, so you literally just whoop your fingers up there and feel for the cervix. When, you're, when you are ovulating, your cervix is high. When you are not ovulating, your cervix is low. Okay? And... Then the final way to monitor your ovulation is um, cervical mucus. Love this. This is the stuff we talk about. When you message me, I'm going to be asking you about your cervical mucus. So your cervical mucus essentially is the wetness okay, that comes out. Now, Fertile cervical mucus feels like egg white. Now, when I tell people that, some people are like, does that mean like cooked egg white? Does that mean like, what does that mean, right? So, egg white in its raw form. I've actually even got an egg here to see. I actually haven't tested this, so we're doing this together. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. Right, if you, if you take, your, take some of your cervical mucus and you string it between your fingers, if it's like globby, like snot, or like a cooked egg or something along those lines. That's not fertile. It, it shouldn't be like globby on your fingers. It needs to be stretchy between your two fingers. Okay. So let's have a look and see if the egg will sort of, yeah. So see how that strings? Can you see that? Maybe put it against my some more up right so how it's stringy like that is how you want it to be can you see that pulling that's essentially that worked I'm pretty impressed with that but that's a little bit disgusting um, that's essentially how you're going to test if your cervical mucus is fertile now why are we so 
funny over cervical mucus. If you don't have good cervical mucus, when you do do your insemination, I do highly recommend that you use a sperm-friendly lubricant. And this is why. So what happens is your cervical mucus will gather the sperm and go through into your uterus. And what it does is it protects the sperm because when you're when if sperm goes in and it doesn't have any protection on it, your body's like, whoa, stranger danger, what's going on? And we'll try and kill the sperm. Cervical mucus protects it. So it will go into your body and body will be like, cool, that's my own stuff. I'm happy with what's going on and allows for the sperm to obviously travel all the way up to your um, eggs. So the cervical mucus can, can be quite important. Um, if you are quite a dry person, um, there's two things that you can do. You can get, um, there's something called mucinex, and that can help pr promote mucus development. Or I have two options. Um, I'll show you. I've got two options of um, sperm-friendly lubricants, and those are, this is what we used. Me and Kat, this is what worked for us, and we got pregnant with this. And here's the lubricant, and it comes with applicators. What you've got to do with this is um, use, I shouldn't really be talking about this during ovulation, but you put it in your body 15 minutes before you inseminate so that it is body temperature, and as if it's cold, it kills the sperm. But, so we've got that, and then we've got this option. This is a... This is another one that's come kind of come up since this. This has got absolutely no parabens in it, which this one does, but this still works. This still has helped many, 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 many people, including me and my partner. Um, so this is just another, <clears throat> I guess, sort of option you can have. This comes with the lubricant just like this. I, don't worry, they're all individually wrapped and sterile, provide some... Um, applicators, I still need to price these up and put them onto the website, but I can offer to get you these if you decide on baby dance. Obviously, if you are in a heterosexual relationship, you don't need these unless you are doing it artificially with your partner. Um, don't frown, a lot of people do, a lot of straight couples do. If it's not working naturally, they do try it this way, but otherwise, this is fine when you're having your intercourse. So that's essentially ovulation. That's essentially how to track your ovulation. And it's important that you keep on top of the ovulation. If you can, try and monitor your ovulation before you've, you start to conceive. It will just give you a better, a better idea of what to tell your donor, when the, your donor must come over. Uh, of course, if you have easy access to your donor, cool. If your donor is your husband or your boyfriend or whatever cool so um yeah i don't want to keep you guys too long it's been quite a long video anyway if you have any more questions please feel free to contact me um i do sell all these products on the website i have ovulation kits um if there's anything you want customized to you please feel free to message me i'm happy to price up and do customize um products so yeah that's all from me and enjoy happy tracking